Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawa Shai, Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawa Shai, Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawa Shai, Call Halal Lai Yahawa Bashim Yahawa Shai. All right, that's Hebrew for bless Yahawa, bless Yahawa Shai. All praises to the Father Yahawa in the name of the Son Yahawa Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War, and uh, back at you with a quick lesson. I got a couple of precepts uh, not placed in order, but uh, the title, I'll probably name it, um, What Are We Living For? Or What Is The Perfect, What Is The Purpose of a Prophet of the Lord? All right, and um, the word prophet itself, it just means to say before, all right, to speak things before it happened you know the word prophet is not a psychic all right you know the prophets speak of what the word of what the lord word is before it happens all right and um when i say that quick precept it says second timothy's four and two preach the word be instant in season and out of season reprove rebuke exhort all exhort with all long suffering and doctrine all right, so the perfect of, the purpose of a prophet, all right, is to say before, speaking the words of the Lord, because it's not of his words. You know, the word prophet, you know, is also, he's, he's also entitled as a seer, okay? A messenger of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh And his job is to do what? It's to preach the word, all right? What word? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh word, who the world ignorantly ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ all right the Bible so it says preach the word be instant in season and out of season so the prophet is going to speak the word all year round he's going to speak the word until the most high shut him up until the Lord don't want to talk to the people anymore all right well to his people and also to the rest of the world it says reprove Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. All right, so it's all about reproving, which is correction, rebuking, which is correction. All right, rebuke is more of a stronger, stronger stance. You know, like cursing someone out, and and in favor for them to get it right. You know, because the Lord is rough, and yes, the Lord is rough with words. His word is, uh, matter of fact, let me get a quick precept. This is um this is Hebrews chapter 4 and 10. It says, excuse me. Four and twelve, for his word, alright, his word, it says, for the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart so the most high's word is quick and powerful man okay and the lord is rough if the most high is angry with his mercy he can send his prophet to warn you in the fashion of rebuking you we're proving you, man. You see? I'm going to read that again. Hebrews chapter 4 and 12. For the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharpened than any two-edged sword. Because a two-edged sword is supposed to be sharp. And it can cut and slice through both ways. You know, with certain swords, I'm not a swordsmith, but I know with certain swords, I know like the katana sword is a it's a one-sided sword and it's very very sharp all right i believe the samurais ninjas or whatever the case they use those swords and it cuts one way so the way that you handle that sword you handle it with two hands and you cut and dice you know you cut in a certain technique but a two-edged sword with both sides of the sword it can cut you know you can swing it and cut because it's going to cut on both sides and the lord said his word 
is sharper than a two-edged sword. All right. It says, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. So the Lord's word gets into your conscience. It gets into your spirit. It says, in the joints of the marrow. All right, because then the joints of your marrow. All right, when it's gonna make you move, man. It's gonna make you do something. That's why you see when the men of the Lord, the prophets are out there teaching, and when the brothers are speaking, you got uh, some people that, you know, you got demons that come across and they gotta say something out. They gotta, you know, they don't even know what the brothers be talking about, but they just gotta say something. They gotta act out, you know, they gotta perform, you know, cause attention to themselves so that the prophets can pay attention to them because the word of the Lord is that strong. The word of the Lord, well, let me say this, the name of the Lord and the word of the Lord can draw out demons, man. All right? The word of the Lord can heal and it can kill. Let me say that again. The word of the Lord can heal and it can kill. It says, and the joints and marrow and a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart because the Lord word make you think. All right? When you're getting rebuked, when you're getting reproved or corrected, the most high make you think is always going to be bearing on your mind. You know? That's how powerful the Lord is, man. And this is only throughout his word, man. Throughout his spirit. How much more the physical contact in which eyes you can see, ears that you can hear when Yahweh Shai cracked those clouds, man. How much more the physical when the Lord is so great spiritually, man. So let's get back. This was 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Because the word, the prophets, the duty of a prophet is to prophesy. And what is he prophesizing is the, is the doctrine and the word that was given to him by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And I also have to say through anointed men. All right, because the scriptures tell you in order for you to know this word, you must be taught. So it says, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So a prophet, you know, you know, a prophet, you know, which is, uh, you know, a true prophet, let me say, because there are false prophets. You know, a true prophet by him uh, exhorting the name of the Lord, standing stiffly for the name of the Lord, which is Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All right, Yahweh is the father, Yahweh Shai is the son, but Hashem means in the name. So you're saying the father and the name of the son, because they are two different entities, man. All right, but they're joined together in one mind, man, on one accord. All right, but they're two different spirits. There's a father, there's a son. Now, it says exhort with long suffering and doctrine. You know a true prophet, when he's been enduring, all right, and suffering for the doctrine of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. That's out there constantly continuing to teach in season and out of season, man. All right. So like the title of the video, I may title it, what it, what are we living for? Or what is the purpose of a prophet of the Lord? All right. Now I have some more precepts here. So I'm just going to jump to them. Let's see what's next one. Um, you know what? I'm going to get Jeremiah real quick. Let's go into that one. Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1 and 4. Then the word of the Lord, Yahweh, came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I obtained thee a prophet unto the nations. So there you go. The Lord foreknew the prophets before they were even in their mother's womb, before they even came out of their father's loins, all right, to be put inside a woman's womb. The Most High knew them in the spirit because the Most High created the spirits through Yahweh Shah, all right? He that got ears to hear, let him hear, all right? So it says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee 
a prophet unto the nations. So when you're in the earth, you as that man of the Lord, by coming into this thing, you don't know that you're a man of the Lord. You think you're just a regular person like everyone else. You know, we still eat, sleep, still need uh, uh, resources to live, still got to pay bills. You're according to society. You know, you still could die, still get hurt, still get sick. But what happens? The Most High sends out a calling. A calling. You hear that word? It comes behind your ear, man. And it say what? Walk ye in it. All right? And you start to grasp upon the truth. Because the Lord is truly now is, is uh, waking up his men. W waking up the uh, elect. Okay? Because the Lord is calling us back. There was a time when the Lord uh, took his name away. He took our nationality, our identity away because he was angry. But now the Lord is calling us back. And all you Israelites today, not going to make it on this go around. Like in old times of ancient Egypt when we was delivered with Moses on the scene. Okay. This time the Lord's calling is for that special, that, uh, I say that righteous, uh, great, that cluster he have left to himself. And that's the elect because through them, he can bring back the rest of Israel, you know, in, in perfect fashion, man. All right. And that's just the way the Lord doing it, man. It's not what I said. It's not It's not what I uh, chose. That's what the Lord chose. And I'm all for it, man. Because that's what the Lord said. So it says... Uh, excuse me. Alright, let me read it again. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. All right, I just want to look up something real quick. Bear with me. Let me look up some. Now the word sanctified. All right. It goes and say to consecrate, sanctify, prepare, dedicate, be hollow, be holy, be sanctified, be separate, be separated. All right. So when the Most High sanctified the elect, he sanctified the prophets, he separated them. All right. Among the Israelites. To be set apart, to be consecrated, to be hollowed, to show oneself sacred, to be honored, to be treated as sacred, to be holy. To be observed as holy. Alright, you get the picture, man. Okay? So it says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So, the, so going back into the title. Alright, what is the purpose of a prophet of the Lord? Is that the, as, is that the Lord hollowed separated certain men among the Israelites to go out and prophesy because he have sanctified them to be holy he sanctified them to be a messenger for him for his mouth for his for his uh for his uh his will all right so let's go on to the next scripture all right now like I said I got precepts they're not um in order but um I was meditating on the topic so you know, I hope Lord's willing this lesson to be edifying to those of the whole four leg. All right. So now this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 28 and 7. It says, Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thy ears and in the ears of all the people, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries 
and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Okay, so you should know a prophet when he's speaking the prophecies of the Lord. All right? And the prophets, like Jeremiah said, even prophets that were before him, they spoke of what? They spoke of they spoke against many countries. If you got guys that say we don't, you know, we don't want to talk about Esau anymore. We're not going to make mention of that. We're just going to rehearse the holy days. You know, we're not going to talk about no mark of the beast. We don't want to get into that because it's too controversial. You know, then guess what? Those are the false prophets, man. Because the real men of the Lord, the real prophets of the Lord, they're not going to hold back. They're going to speak against the countries, man. All right. It says, prophesies both against many countries and great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilences, man. So if a, a purpose of a prophet is to speak, you know, the judgments in which the Lord is going to send out because of the wickedness. All right. And right now we're living in Babylon the Great for those who live in the soils of North America. North America is Babylon the Great. And you better believe that North America is written in the scriptures, but under the name Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon, the mother of harlots. All right. This is the most sinful uh, kingdom on the earth, man. And the Lord said his eyes is upon this place, man. And he's going to destroy it from off the face of the earth. All right. So it says, it says, in many countries against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence, the prophets which prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. So you got certain men that prophesies that is we should we should uh you know be PC politically correct. We should uh you know teach to not offend. Well, that ain't the prophet of the Lord. The Lord is not from America, nor is the Lord from this world. All right, He's above us. He sets uh, the orders and the ways of man. He judges in the kingdom of men. All right. Just because Esau is ruling and he has power, well, the Most High and his son, Shai has more power than him. All right? And it's just a matter of time where Esau is he's not going to go unpunished, man. All right? It's just a matter of time for when the Lord fulfilled these prophecies, like, you know, the breaking the, of World War III, which is Armageddon, a thermonuclear war, the force of the RFID microchip, you know? These things have to take place. And when they do, then you're going to know there was what? Prophets among you, man. Then you would know that the prophets, the true men of the Lord, was sent. Instead, you got other men prophesizing of peace. Where there is no peace right now. We're in a time of war. All right? And um, precept coming to mind is uh, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, right? Three... And verse 1 To everything there is a season And a time to every purpose under the heaven A time to be born And a time to die A time to plant And a time to pluck up that which is planted So there's always a purpose For the season under the heaven, man It says to everything there is a season And a time to every purpose under the heaven You gotta understand that Right now we're in that time of uh, speaking out. Let me finish reading. So lock it. You know. It says a time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant. And a time to pluck up. That which is planting. A time to kill. So that's right. The most high. Uh, appointed a certain time. In the season. Alright. In the heavens. A time to kill. Okay. A time to heal. A time to break down. A time to build up. A time to weep. And a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. The Most High does all these things. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Call Halal La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says, A time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. So I'm going to jump. This is verse 8. It says, A time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. You see? So let's get back. To the precepts 
All right, let me get the next one. This is uh, Romans chapter 8 and 28. And we, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You see, because it's always according to the Most High's purpose, man. All right? Things won't get done unless the Most High ordained it. And that's what the people fail to realize because you think you got free will. Yeah, I could grab my water bottle. I could drink it. I could go to the store, buy tissue. I could go run in this park right here. But guess what? If the Most High don't ordain those steps, them things won't happen, man. You can just give up the breath right now and die. You know, you can get into a car accident before you about to go do what you think you're going to do. You know, the scriptures say man's going is of the Lord, man. You don't have free will because everything is according to the Lord's purpose. The reason why Esau is ruling is according to the Lord's purpose. The reason why his technology and, you know, he dealing with AI intelligence and all this other stuff and things that we don't even know about. All right. High, high uh, technology, man. You know, his excellency reaches up to the heavens. It's because of the Lord's purpose. All right. And uh, you could get, uh, what's that, uh, Romans 9? You know, his his purpose, the most high built. Let me get that real quick. Real quick. Let me just read it through. This is Romans 9 and 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What, uh, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the most high? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then is it is so then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the most high that showeth mercy. Showing you everything is according to the purpose of the most high. Verse 17 For the scriptures say unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee. And that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Bam. There you go. All right. The Most High built Pharaoh up in that time because the Lord Yahweh, okay, the Heavenly Father, he wanted to show his power in the earth. Okay. So how much more he's doing to these Edomites, man. All right. So I'm going to get back. Um, Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them who are the called according to his purpose for whom he did for new all right and also it gets into his scriptures also can explain also reincarnation man all right how we uh uh replay or we uh renew in the earth all right and not just being born once and then dying and never existing again no we're recycled man all right our faces renew the earth once again so it says um to, him, to them who are called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. All right. And um, let's get some real quick. Look up something. This is uh, Romans 8 and 28. This is Romans 8 29. Just wanted to look up the word. <laughs> Strong G 4309. Praarizo. Praarizo. All right, that's the Greek word for predestinate. Now, predestinate means to predetermine. You see? Decide beforehand. So the Lord decided who was going to be his men. From the very beginning, the first fruits. He decided beforehand, before they came into the earth, he decided who was his. It says to, pre to, to predetermine, decide beforehand. Uh, to foreordain, a point beforehand. To limit in advance, predetermine, 
determined before. All right, so that's you know, that's, you you get it, man. You should. Romans eight and twenty nine, for whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, because these men, the prophets, all right, they were all given to who, his only begotten son Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right, they was made in the image. Under Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. They were given to the Son. Alright. And that's why Yahweh Shai went out looking for the prophets of the Lord. Alright. And he found them because the Heavenly Father gave him the men. Okay. It says that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That's right. Because he was the first spirit created. It says, verse 30, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. All right? So what is the purpose of a prophet of the Lord? To do the will of the Most High, man. That's all. Simple, man. Simple. All right? Because why? They were predestinated. They was beforehand put together to do the will of the Most High. All right? Now, this is my last precept, and I'm going to wrap it up with this. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and 9. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable. Excuse me, let me read it again. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as groves and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd to further by these my son be admonished. Of making many books there is no end And much study is a weariness of the flesh Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments For this is the whole duty of man For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment And every secret thing Whether it be good or whether it be evil Alright, so the whole duty of man period as an Israelite is to serve and worship Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and to fear the Lord. All right. So the ways of the Lord, the ways of a prophet. All right. Because I had two titles here. I didn't know which one to title. You know, what, what are we living for? And then the other title was, what is the purpose of a prophet of the Lord? You know, and I hope, you know, you got understanding by this lesson. What's the prophet of the Lord? Because you should know them. You should know them by their fruits. You should know them by their works. You know, and that's how you can tell, but you have to be uh, in tune into the scriptures. You know, you can't go off of feelings and emotions and things you like. You have to put yourself aside and understand and take heed as a little child, be humble, and to learn what are the ways of the Most High, what are the ways of his son, Yahweh Shai. All right? The scriptures say, blessed he that readeth, man. You know? So then, maybe in that time, when you take that 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 type of route and that type of spirit with the lord the lord can give you eyes to see you know so i hope this lesson was edifying about 30 minutes in i want to give all praises to yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem rakakwadash i like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of great millstone salutations to all the lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad teaching his word of sincerity and truth shalom